Hello again, Star Trek friends. I'd like to welcome you to another video involving Star Trek and involving model kits and some model kits that aren't as popular or easier to find as others. Um, we're going to go back to Star Trek the motion picture today and I've shown you the, video, the, uh, the models in the videos of Star Trek the motion picture in the past. I've shown you the AMT Enterprise. I've shown you the Vulcan shuttle. And I've shown you the Klingon um, Kvorcha class. Or the Katinga class. I'm sorry, it was Katinga. And what I want to show you today is another version of one of those models. <clears throat> but it's a different release. This is Matchbox. You may or may not know that AMT um, at one time was owned by Lindsay, and Lindsay is, um, owns Matchbox. Matchbox, of course, being the famous um, small metal model cars that I feel like me, you grew up with. And we've got the Vulcan Shuttle. And this is from AMT, Matchbox from Star Trek the motion picture and you can see a nice picture of the Surak. Of course this is what transports Mr. Spock to the Enterprise. <clears throat> In the top section um, detaches and you can see that door or that uh, portal on the end and that's when Mr. Spock is able to go onto the bridge. You can see some information on the bottom. A detachable shuttle model, uh, module, excuse me. It's over 25 centimeters long. Display stand included. You can see the different uh, parts molded in white. Self adhesive and dry transfer decals. Um, I don't think it's in white, I think it's actually colored. A molded in the same color as that and model assembly instructions thread not included in kit so this is pretty cool again this is you can look and pretty not you know they're not too terribly expensive to get the one that I showed you um, from 1979 this one's a little harder to find you don't you just don't see this one around a lot and this is Matchbox AMT PK5112, the Vulcan shuttle from Star Trek, the motion picture. A super detailed model of the Vulcan shuttle featured in the motion picture Star Trek. Painting is not essential. The decals in the special display stand are provided. You can see some different languages. Moving on, you can see the modules separate. Shuttle module separates from the warp drive sled. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's show you guys the ends of the box. They're pretty much the same on both sides. Vulcan shuttle, Star Trek the motion picture, PK5112. And this model has kind of been around the block. Uh, the only reason I purchased this model, it wasn't terribly expensive, but I mean, the condition really isn't that great. But I didn't have one of these. And due to its rarity, I figured, you know what, I'd like to add this to my collection. So this is the side that I just showed you. I'll show you the other side of the box. Lots of different languages. 1980 Lesney Products. Printed in England. Parts made in the UK, USA specification and color of content subject to... Amendment, paint and cement not included. So this is a 1980 release, and Star Trek The Motion Picture came out in 79. I'll show you that there's nothing on the back. <clears throat> so why don't we go ahead, and I'm going to show you what's in this pretty cool kit. We'll take a look at all the contents from the shuttle from Star Trek The Motion Picture. All right, let's take a look inside this vintage kit. First thing you can see the instructions. 
<clears throat> Let's go through the instruction sheet. 300 years from now, star date 7413.1, a long range warp power shuttle carrying Spock switches to impulse retro power to rendezvous with the USS Enterprise. Utilizing the, de the detachable passenger module, the Vulcan science officer will transfer her to the starship as she blasts off to intercept the gigantic luminous cloud threatening planet Earth. The human adventure is just beginning. And this is PK5112, the assembly instructions for the Vulcan shuttle. All right, let's open up the... All right, so you can see, oh, we got the, the back end. You can see the date right there, 1980. And this is the paint instructions. We've got silver fox, copper plate, Baltic blue, coal black, clear polyurethane, and bright red. And this is from Lesney. All right, so I think it's kind of like something we're going to open up because this is. All right, so when you open it up, we got the parts list on the inside. You can see the warp cells and the capsule. And you can see they've got the same stand as the Enterprise and the Klingon warship and I'm not sure what those are but we'll find out and moving on to the step one trim excess plastic test fit and paint parts before assembly scrape paint away from surface to be cemented together assemble parts in a sequence shown black numbers in a circle indicate part number black number in a star indicates completed sections and you can see we've got the key to glue areas where you're not supposed to glue. Moving on to step one. You can see we're going to work on the warp nacelles first. Step two, we go right to the module. On to step three. You can see putting on the uh, what's going to be the door that's going to dock with the Enterprise behind the bridge. And step four, you can see where you attach it. Thread is not included in kit. You know, I think the newer version of this actually has magnets that you put inside um, of either sections so that the module goes and locks into place. And then we've got the painting guide and the decal guide. Rub down transfers, remove backing sheet, position decal and rub lightly with burnisher. With burnisher. To transfer carefully, lift decal sheet, place Protect, protective backing sheet over the transfer decal and rub firmly with flat end of burnisher. Several coats of clear 35 give added protection. Note, wash the model with warm soapy water before applying the decals. You can see the decals and the paint, the colors. So that's pretty cool. I always love looking at vintage things, especially for Star Trek. All right, what do we got? Let me show you guys the transfer the stickers first. You can see this is the, the Vulcan shuttle. You can see the grids, the grills. And this is kind of the same rainbow effect stickers that the Enterprise has. All 
All right, here are the, the decals themselves. Came off of the protective sheet. So I think I'll go like that, keep them safe. You can see the Surak. And the Vulcan markings. There's not a lot of, a terribly a uh, lot. You can see it's 1979 down there on the bottom, Lesney. So there's really not a whole lot of decals, but enough to know that it's the Surak VS5047. You can see all the, the numbers. These have a backing like wax paper protective backing. And I think that's it for everything other than the parts. So the parts are still sealed. Well, let's go ahead. I want to show you guys all the different parts. So let's open up the bag. All right, what do we got first? We got the we got the uh, looks like the top of the sled, a sled section where the warp drive is going to be, where the nacelles are going to go on either side. You can see I'm not sure what this section is, and we got that right there. Let's see. Looks like this piece is about to come off the tree. All right, let's put that aside. And you can see there are a lot of pieces that have come off the tree. You can see the module. It might be fun to look for a newer version of this kit. Um, if I can get one at a decent price, it'd be fun to compare what's in both kits. Um, again, I had told you that um, I'm almost positive with the polar lights, they had put in magnets so the, um, the module stays on the craft. All right, looks like we got one of the warp nacelles. And it looks like <laughs> over the course of the years um, and the handling, there's nothing left on this tree. But let me show you guys the base. And again, this is the same kind of base that's um, included with the USS Enterprise and the Klingon Katinga class ship from Star Trek, the motion picture. And actually this is the same kind of base that the original Enterprise came with, um, AMT model kits. Actually the, the Klingon D7 had one of these as well, um, but the original um, Romulan ship had a different base. Yeah, because that wasn't in a long box, so. But that's another video. You can see Paramount Pictures on the inside. And we got a section that had come off the tree. All right, is this still on? Yeah, this one is still kind of attached to the tree. So you can see where the other warp cell was on. And there are a couple of pieces. I'm not sure what they are. But along with the three nacelles that are still clinging to the trees, you can see the, the grills. The detail is pretty cool considering this was back in 1979. 1980. Very nice. And the rest of the pots are all loose. So we got, again, it's hard to, to decipher what they are. But 
can see that part. Um, this is obviously part of the base. You can see where the ship is going to be mounted. Let me get the base. And you can see that. There we go, just like that. Let's see if I can actually get them in together without. They don't really want to line up. I don't want to damage it. But basically that's how it's going to go. All right, what else we got in here? Looks like we've got another section of the paneling. And this could be the underneath. And we got a bunch of smaller parts. So this looks like it's the ends of the nacelles. You can see this part right here is are these parts. So these are going to go on either what nacelle at the end. Maybe that's what those small grill stickers were for on the rainbow sheet. And this is the, the small docking tube. If you can see the door in there. And this is gonna mount in the back right there. And this is where Mr. Spock is gonna dock and come through the Enterprise. And it's going to dock right behind the bridge. It's going to come in through the the, the, um, the doors. You can see these look like they go on the side. Um, I, I don't know if they go on the side of the nacelles or the main body. But we got one there. And we got another one. And we got another detailed piece. And we got a real small piece. I don't know if this is just part of the tree or if this is an actual piece. It looks like it could be just part of the tree. And let's see. We got this part. You can see what looks like a little door on it. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. Let's see, is that everything? Yep, that was a little piece I showed you. And that's everything. That's included in this pretty awesome kit. Um, I'm tempted to make this because I think it'll be really cool to make a vintage model. Speaking of making vintage models, um, one of the model kits that I have, the original long box of the Klingon D7 Battle Cruiser, um, we're going to be doing an unboxing and a build of the original so that's going to be really fun so watch for that and i'll explain more of that in another video but this video is from star trek the motion picture and i showed you guys the surak and like i said the difference between this one and the one that i showed you last time is the matchbox logo it is made from the leslie corporation and this was a european release You can see Vulcan shuttle, detachable shuttle module. And what I'll do is I'll put the, the instructions up of the release of this, the new release. Um, Polar Lights or Round 2 release this new, and I'm almost positive they have magnets that go in either section. So what I'll do is I'm going to look those up, and I'm going to put those up for you just to show you um, the difference in the instructions. So, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video and unboxing of the Vulcan shuttlecraft Surak from Star Trek The Motion Picture, and this is from Matchbox AMT. I thank you for watching, and until the next video, I'll talk to you guys real soon.